All right. Uh, we'll open up for questions for Snit. We'll start down here with Mark. Snit, when it came to Kyle and Jesse, was it just that they weren't ready? I know with Kyle, he needed extra days. Is that that play in the decision as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kyle, Kyle's not right. Um, you know, he he had an MRI yesterday and didn't. I mean, he's going to have to have a procedure done in order to get him right. And they're going, you know, going to confer with the doctors and decide exactly what it is. But he could tell he wasn't right when the last three or four outings um, in the regular season. And it just wasn't going to be Jesse too. Jesse missed three months, and um, you know he wasn't he, he wasn't throwing like he's capable of throwing, pretty much. Next question. Come to here, Justin. Snit, when you look at Tonkin, how much could this a little bit of extra rest this last week uh, help him after kind of a rough end to the season? Yeah. Well, no, I think it was good. I mean, he threw the ball well in the scrimmages. He's and. On his part, you know, he's a guy that he can throw three innings and then throw the next day if you need him to. So um, I think that's the the value that he brings is not only the versatility, but um, just the fact that he's durable. Dave, front row. Did the extra day rest in this in a short series allow you to go with maybe one pitcher fewer than you might for yeah, the next round? I think so. That you know, we, we're just looking at all that, and and we liked having, you know, adding Grissom too with his versatility and an extra bat off the bench. He can run, do a lot of things for you. But we just kind of looked like with all the days off that we got, we should be able to get by. And, and Dave's Bell, um, did he show enough? Obviously, yeah, in the inner that, squads, he pretty much pitched his way on in, uh, over the the inner squads. We threw him back to back, and and. It was as good as it was when he came, when, you know, when we called him up early on and really liked him. And, and um, but it was just pretty much the stuff that he showed. Next question, second row, in the middle. <clears throat> hey, Snit, uh, for Kyle, the procedure, um, is there a chance he'll be ready for spring training next year? Or no, just, um, I, I don't think so. You know what? I, I think what they're talking about doing, and like I say, this is all for him to discuss with the doctors. I mean, it's something that, um, Looking at it, he's going to miss next year. Next question. Back to Justin. And I mean, he was a guy who won 21 games last year. How, mu how much do you just hate the news for him? I hate it for him. I mean, it was, um, you know, it's a tough decision, number one, when you have to tell him he didn't make the roster. But, the, you know, the reason, and then I think he just, I mean, he said he just, well, he wants to get everything taken care of then. And um, I, I hate it for the person just because the kid wants to be out there coming off a year like he did last year. I know it killed him all year to not be out here, um, you know, and, it, and it's hard. And, there, you know, there's something, there's something going on, and they found it yesterday. Okay, next question. Anything else? You're going to go in the back there, in the middle? Uh, what can kind of what's what's your breakdown on and Ranger Suarez? What do you tell the, the the lineup about how to approach? Yeah, no, I mean it's um, you know he's a tough ride. He always is um, for us. So um, you know, hopefully we can do what we've been doing and and put some runs on the board early. Can we go to Kelly here, front. Speaking of that lineup, you did shuffle some things around. Mm -hmm. The thought behind moving Riley up is and just you know, they're a lot of their heavy leverage guys are left-handed, and it just you know just trying to to get the right-handers up there more. I mean, it's something you know what we've done in the past in the post. This is postseason. It's this is different than than the last 162 games we played, and um, you know, a big part of their their bullpen are left-handed guys. Anything else, Snit? Okay. Thanks, Nick. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Max, what was the most encouraging thing that you drew from Tuesday's appearance or those those five innings you threw? Uh, that I was able to go out there, throw, um, you know, get up five times, keep my arm going, and um, just face some guys, feel like I was in some kind of a – competitive env environment and coming out healthy. I mean, just coming out feeling good and ready to go. I think that was the most important thing. Sorry. Are you, are you tired of talking about the blister, though? I mean, is it, was it wearing on you? Uh, it's kind of been a narrative that I've had throughout my, my career in the big leagues, um, something that I've had to monitor and uh, just kind of deal with and battle through. So. It's it's part of it. 
And Max, uh, Snitch has told us that, unfortunately, Kyle's going to have to be shut down for all of 2024. Um, what, what do you say to him as a friend, as a teammate, um, just to battle through something like that? Uh, to be honest, that's, that's news to me. So um, I don't know too much about the details, but I know that uh, I, I rehabbed a lot with Kyle this, throughout this year. We spent a lot of time together. Um, he worked extremely hard to try to come back and uh, battle, and I know he wanted to be a part of this run and into this playoffs, and that's what he set his goals out to be. So um, just to hear that he's he's not going to be with us uh, throughout the playoffs, it's it's really you know disheartening just for him. You know he's he's put in so much work and he's grinded. So to hear that, um, you know you feel for him, but. I know that he's one of the hardest workers that I've seen. He's going to do everything that he can to make sure that he gets back to form and um, you know be able to compete and have success here for a long time. Uh, Max, would the would the cooler, kind of drier weather help or hinder the blister? Uh, does has it seems like in the past it's kind of helped it, but I'm not certain. Yeah, uh, I think any time that. Uh, for me personally, when it's not as hot and humid, uh, my skin doesn't get as sweaty and soft and be able to kind of rip. So definitely the, the cooler environment definitely helps. Um, but it's one of those things where it just kind of pops up. It wasn't all that hot in, uh, in Washington when it happened last. So um, something that, like kind of every start that I've had, in the big leagues, just something you got to monitor and uh, just kind of pitch through, do your best you can to be the same and uh, just make pitches realistically. As Nate was saying the other night, you can barely even see the blister anymore. Yeah. How much has it improved over those these two weeks? And by wearing that Band-Aid, did it look any different after Tuesday's outing than it did before? Um, it's, I mean, right now it's, as far as visuals and the way it feels, it just feels like my f finger's healed and it's back to normal. Um, as far as the Band-Aid, it's just more of been a precaution of the times that I have thrown and being able to have that kind of, you know, friction on the ball just to kind of protect it and give it as much time for the skin to heal as possible. So. Uh, we've just been leaning on the on the more cautious side, um, realizing that this is kind of what we're what we're waiting for, and for me to be as healthy as possible going into the playoffs. Max, after opening up the playoffs last year against Philadelphia, not feeling particularly well, can you reflect on how fortunate you must feel to be relatively healthy now? Um, yeah, I mean. Obviously not the most ideal situations coming in. Uh, not not all the way healthy, missing some time going into the playoffs, but um, physically my body and the way that I'm feeling this year versus last year's, you know, night and day different. So um, I'm feeling really good. I feel strong. Um, obviously don't have too many innings on my arm this year, so I'm just getting excited to get back out there and kind of just leave it all out there and, you know, kind of just go to battle with my guys. Thank you. I'm curious, have people, like, offered you their home remedies about trying to fix your blister or things like that? Uh, I've, gotten, I've gotten a few different ones. Um, maybe a couple that I probably shouldn't say here, but, uh, yeah, no, we've – kind of just been throwing everything we can at it from home remedies, uh, something as just, you know, as much as like pickle juice to um, some of the, the medical equipment that we have. So it's it's just more of everybody's everybody's body reacts differently and you just have to try to find what, what works for each individual. Okay, Max, blisters aside, everything aside, um, you're facing a team that you've seen a lot and they mean something very different at this time of the year. What changes as far as a mindset, as far as an approach, how do you go into it? Um, 
I, I, you just have to. It's it's a good one because they obviously there are no secrets. We've, I've I think I have faced this Phillies team just about more than anyone in my career. Um, they know what I have. I know what they have. There's there's no secrets. Um, it's just toeing the rubber and executing and throwing throwing the pitches that I need to and just whoever executes the best that day. And um, I know that they're not going to give me anything. Um, they're extremely disciplined. They're great hitters. And they they play well. Um, and they play good baseball, especially when it matters most and they need to win. Um, when they need to shorten up and go the other way, they do that. If they need to go for a long ball, they, they're able to do that. They're, they're extremely versatile. And uh, you know you have to bring your A game to to be able to navigate through that kind of lineup and um, give your team a chance to win. Thanks, man. Awesome. Thank you, guys.